Dr. Shannon Lee from Equine Dental Vets and today I'm here with Dr. Kath Mitchell from the Gisman Vet Clinic. We're going to talk about equine metabolic syndrome and past maturity intermediate dysfunction. So Kath, should we go and have a look at this stuff? Sounds like a good plan. Okay, excellent. Uh, I'm here with Dr. Kath Mitchell who is a board certified specialist in large animal medicine who's from the Gisborne Vet Clinic and uh, she's going to tell us a little bit about equine metabolic syndrome. So Kath, could you enlighten me a bit about equine metabolic syndrome and what it is? It's a really good question. Equine metabolic syndrome is um, a collection of problems, but the main thing we see is, is fatter ponies with uh, cresty necks that are really prone to laminitis. And uh, that's why we're really worried about equine metabolic syndrome and that's why we're trying to identify these ponies and, uh, and get some, some treatment into these ponies to try and prevent them from having laminitis. Uh, so what happens with these ponies is that they're genetically predisposed to doing really well. They um, are what we call easy keepers or um, uh, thr they have thrifty genes so they're supposed to uh, thrive on not very much food. And then we've taken these ponies and we've uh, fed them too much and we haven't exercised them enough and then they're really prone to laminitis when that happens. Okay, so Kath, if I've bought a new pony or had a pony for some time and I'm worried that it might have equine metabolic syndrome, what, what would I look for or how do I tell? How do you tell? Well, I think probably um, the, the easiest way to tell if your pony has EMS is, is what we call its phenotype, which is how it looks, um, what sort of shape the, the pony is. And particularly we're looking at um, where or if there are fat deposits um, on your pony's body. Uh, the most important fat deposit that we see is the fat deposit in the neck, which is what we call a cresty neck. And if your pony has a cresty neck, it has a really high chance of having um, equine metabolic syndrome. There are other fat deposits that occur, um, particularly around the tail head and also around the prepuce, so the sheath, and, uh, and so they're the, the two other common areas. But certainly if your pony has a, a cresty neck, um, even if it's not fat in any other place, that makes your pony at very high risk of having equine metabolic syndrome. And uh, these ponies are what we call easy keepers. So if your pony doesn't need very much food to maintain its body condition, or if your pony seems to get fat really easily, especially on the spring grass, then that makes your pony also very likely to have equine metabolic syndrome. We also consider you know, horses that have laminitis for no other good reason. So if your horse all of a sudden develops laminitis, especially if it develops laminitis on the spring grass, then we'd be worried that maybe your pony or horse had equine metabolic syndrome. Okay, so if my pony uh, is diagnosed with equine metabolic syndrome, what can I do to manage my pony or stop the pony's EMS from getting worse? Well, the most important thing that with these ponies is to try and avoid them from getting too fat in the first place. So these ponies don't need a lot of food, um, and uh, so by managing their diet and avoiding giving them too much um, sugar in their diet is really important. Uh, so if these ponies can be managed with a healthy body condition, uh, then we can often stop the, the laminitis from developing. The other really important part of managing this disease is exercise, and uh, these ponies need to be regularly exercised, um, and that helps their body deal with the uh, excess levels of insulin better and actually makes them what we call more sensitive to the insulin so they don't need as much insulin and uh, and that's the other really critical part of managing this disease so I think if you can uh, keep your your pony's body weight under control and you can keep exercising it regularly then we can hopefully stop these ponies from getting uh, laminitis down the track. So Kath a few people watching this might have ponies with EMS or might be concerned that they have ponies with EMS after they've gone and, and gotten their vet involved and had some advice and a diagnosis, um, can you just talk a little bit or give us some uh, information about uh, how they manage EMS or general management of EMS? Yeah, I think this is the most important part really of, of knowing whether or not your pony has EMS because I think if we can take these ponies that are at risk of EMS and stop them from having laminitis, then we've done our job. So I think uh, what we need to do with these ponies is recognise that they are at risk. We need to really manage their diet and their exercise levels very well. And, uh, and then hopefully if we do that we can, we can prevent them from getting laminitis down the track. 
I think probably the biggest thing that we can do is make sure that these ponies, they, they don't have too much food. So we really need to manage the body condition of these ponies. We need to avoid sugary foods, so your spring grass is particularly bad, um, your grains, your oats, your maize, your barley, all of those, um, molasses, those sorts of things, they're really high in sugar and that, that's the worst thing that this pony could have. Uh, so what you want to do is, is feed the pony the you know, healthy food that's higher in protein and fat and avoid the, the carbs, the sugar. Um, I think that's really important and then I think you know these ponies are designed to be ridden they need exercise so I think that if you can keep your regular exercise up it doesn't have to be very long but it just needs to be regular so every day or every second day get the pony out lunge it ride it take it for a walk um, get the pony moving I think that's really important and uh, and that's one of the the best ways that we can prevent these ponies from getting laminitis down the track. So Kath you mentioned insulin before um, would you mind just explaining a bit about the role of insulin in equine metabolic syndrome and the role of insulin in the body? Yeah, sure. So um, with these ponies that have equine metabolic syndrome, they have a problem called insulin resistance. And so first of all, we need to understand what insulin is and what it does in a normal horse. So insulin is um, a hormone that's produced by an organ in the body called the pancreas. And its job is to take the glucose that we eat in our diet and then utilize that gl glucose. So actually have the, uh, the cells and the tissues of the body um, be able to use the glucose properly. And so insulin makes the cells be able to absorb the glucose and then helps the glucose be stored um, for later use as sometimes fat. Um, so it's really important in the regulation of, of the blood sugar level or the blood glucose level. And uh, in these ponies that have insulin resistance, their body is not responding to the insulin that their body is producing. And so the body is having to produce more and more insulin to try and get the same effect. And uh, what we see when we have really high levels of insulin being produced is that the insulin can become toxic, especially to the really sensitive tissues of the horse's foot, uh, which are called laminae. And that's where we think the laminitis develops from. So Kath, uh, one of the important conditions here we talked about is equine metabolic syndrome, but the other one we really wanted to ask you about today is PPID or pituitary pars intermediate dysfunction, otherwise known as Cushing's disease. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the difference between these two diseases? Sure. Uh, so the fancy name or for, for Cushing's disease, which is PPID, um, is a problem that affects older ponies, typically in their late teens to early 20s. Um, can also affect horses as well, but it seems to be more common in ponies. And it's actually a, a problem with part of the brain. So there's a little part of the brain called the pituitary gland, and it is really important for um, producing hormones that regulate your body. Um, and the pituitary gland stops functioning properly, and that's why we call it um, pituitary pars intermediate dysfunction, uh, or PPID. And uh, so when the, the gland stops functioning, it stops producing the right levels of hormones, and it actually starts producing really, really high levels of a hormone called ACTH. And, uh, and then that, that hormone is broken down to a bunch of other little hormones, and, uh, and that's what we see causing a lot of the, the problems with these ponies. So the classic pony with PPID is your pony that has a really curly coat and uh, has um, a predisposition to laminitis. Often they are prone to infections because their immune system isn't functioning very well and, uh, and they can also drink a lot and urinate a lot, those sorts of things. But your, your classic pony that you uh, think of is your really curly, sweaty um, pony. As it gets older, you, you can notice the coat change. They stop shedding out their winter coat, that sort of thing. Okay, so how can I tell if my pony has PPID or Cushing's disease? Well, there's a couple of ways um, that you can tell if your, your pony has Cushing's disease. Um, the classic one is that if your pony has a really curly coat and uh, doesn't lose its coat after, after winter, so it doesn't shed its coat normally in the spring, uh, then that's your classic. If you have that, then you, you have to have Cushing's disease. There's nothing else that can cause your, your pony's coat to turn curly and not shed. Um, but there are lots of horses out there, horses and ponies, that don't have the typical curly coat. And so those are the ones that we need to, to do more testing on to work out whether they have Cushing's disease or not. And there are a couple of ways that we can, we can test. 
Uh, the most simple way is that we can uh, take a blood sample any time of the day and uh, measure the hormone ACTH in the blood. And that's a, a relatively simple but not necessarily cheap test to do. Uh, and that will uh, usually take a couple of weeks to come back and then we'll know if the level is really, really high, then your pony has Cushing's disease. Um, and if the level is low, then your pony doesn't have Cushing's disease. Sometimes it gets a little bit tricky if, you're, if your pony is borderline. Um, there are more complicated tests that we can do um, that we can then go and uh, challenge the pony with a uh, medication to try and see if we can suppress the production of certain hormones. Um, the most common test that we do is called a dexamethasone suppression test where we actually take a blood sample, uh, then we give your pony a shot of dexamethasone which is a type of corticosteroid and then we come back in about uh, almost 24 hours and take another blood sample and we measure whether or not the cortisol level has decreased. And uh, a normal pony will have a, a lower cortisol after the dexamethasone and a pony with Cushing's disease will, will have a really high cortisol level after the dexamethasone. So uh, that's, it has some risks and it's not you know, a simple test in that it takes 24 hours so we have to come back twice and take two blood samples. And there is a risk that the steroids might cause your pony to have a flare up of his laminitis. So we, we don't do that test as often. If I have a pony or a horse with Cushing's disease or PPID, what can I do about it? Well, there is lots that you can do about it. Um, I think the most important thing is first to confirm the diagnosis. So it's always important to you know, get your vet involved and make sure that you have the, the right diagnosis. Um, once we have confirmed that your pony has Cushing's disease, then there are some treatments available. Um, the most common treatment and the best treatment is a drug called pergolide, and it works by um, basically improving the, your brain's function, and so the pituitary gland actually starts functioning better and stops producing such high levels of the ACTH. And uh, once the high levels of ACTH start to come down, then your pony starts to feel much better. Um, basically what, what's happening with Cushing's disease is that your immune system is being suppressed, so these ponies have real trouble fighting off infection. They can be really prone to things like hoof abscesses, they can be prone to skin infections, they can have wounds that don't want to heal, um, particularly things like um, tooth root abscesses and eye ulcers, they take a really long time to heal. So it's really important that these ponies actually get treatment which helps their immune system function better and we can actually start to get on top of some of these problems. Um, certainly the treatment will help prevent the horse from having laminitis which is a really um, important thing too. If we can stop the pony from having another episode of laminitis that's the most important thing that we can do. Um, I think the other things that we can do along with medication are we can make sure that the pony is as fit and healthy in all the other ways. So we make sure its feet are done regularly, make sure its teeth are checked regularly, make sure it's got a good healthy diet and, um, and make sure that we're keeping its body condition under control because we don't want these ponies to get fat either. So uh, if these ponies get fat as well as have Cushing's then they're much more likely to founder or have laminitis down the track. So. Kath, would you mind just explaining a little bit about the difference between this equine metabolic syndrome and pars pituitary intermediate dysfunction? <laughs> sure, so the most, um, I guess, are sort of two categories of horses. The horses with EMS are generally younger horses so they tend to be, you know, but somewhere between maybe 5 and 15, um, whereas the horses with your uh, PPID or Cushing's disease tend to be your older horses, tend to be your late teens, early 20s and 30s and 40s. Um, so that's probably one of your biggest differences is that they're, they're occurring at different times in your life. What we think happens is that the horses that are genetically um, prone to having EMS could certainly go on and develop Cushing's disease as they get older. So there's nothing to say that you, your horse or pony couldn't have both at the same time, particularly when it's in its late teens, early 20s. Um, but generally speaking, they are you know, happening at a different time in their life. The horses with the equine metabolic syndrome are horses that are prone to being you know, obese, so they're going to be more likely to get fat, they're going to have your crusty neck, and they're going to be prone to laminitis because of this problem, this insulin resistance problem. Whereas your horses with your uh, PPID or Cushing's disease 
they don't necessarily have to be fat horses and in fact some of the time there can be horses that are losing weight uh, but they are horses because of the dysfunction of the gland in their brain they are horses that are prone to laminitis um, because of these abnormal hormone levels that are produced and certainly um, there is a little bit of crossover but generally speaking they're, they're two separate um, disease processes and categories. Kath, that was fantastic. Very informative and I think people will find it very useful if they have either a pony with EMS or uh, laminitis or Cushing's disease. Um, and I understand the next time we hear from you, you might be in Switzerland. That's right, yes. Uh, heading off there in about six months' time. Fantastic. All right. Well, thanks again for all the information and uh, hopefully we might hear from you shortly. No problem.